Well, good morning. Good morning. Hello. Uh, welcome back again to another homegrown lecture series brought to you from Texas A&M AgriLife Extension in Harris County. Uh, we're just trucking along this year. We've already got three talks down and, uh, you know, a number to go. Today we are going to see Paul Winsky, who is the County Extension Agent in Horticulture here in Harris County, talking about starting plants from cuttings. I do have the uh, lecture series up. If you are watching this on the recording and you're not, um, you know, attending live, just know that, uh, you know, we'd love to have you live here every first Thursday of the month. Uh, next month in May is going to be making Boudin with uh, Sh Shannon Dietz. He is our ag agent. And then I'm going to uh, close out spring with 10 reasons for yellowing leaves. Brandy Keller, that's me. Um, something else to mention, if you have signed up for the grown, Homegrown Lecture Series, we do send out a newsletter every month. If you are not uh, utilizing that, it really does supplement a lot of the information that we give uh, during our talks. Uh, it's seasonal and um, sometimes it does relate back to the um, homegrown lecture that we've given, but it doesn't overlap any information. So we do put those together uh, every month, so please check those out. Um, and we're going to talk about some more events uh, at the end. So, uh, so we're not uh, uh, putting this off any longer. I'm going to get Paul up here on your screen. And I would like to introduce again, Paul Winsky with Harris County uh, Extension Office. All right. Well, welcome Harris County. Uh, this is Paul Winsky, your commercial horticulture agent, and welcome back to the Homegrown series. Today, I'm going to talk about starting plants from cuttings. Now, if you remember, if you were with us back in January, I talked about starting plants from seeds. I'm going to talk about how you can have your stock plant like this, remove a cutting like this, and root it like these guys here. Okay, so that is what we are going to cover today. But before we get started, of course, just like anything else, there's always a little bit of background information that you need. And uh, you need that information in order for you to be successful. And that's the main thing we want to do. We want to make sure you are successful. So if you look over here, when we talk about propagation, all right, there's two types. So back in January, we talked about seed propagation, which is sexual propagation. And what that means is uh, the pot gamete and the uh, fertilizes the ov 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 ovary or the ovule uh, and it forms a seed and we can take that seed, plant it and grow out uh, the plant. So that's our sexual propagation. One thing about sexual propagation is, um, especially in wild collected seed, you don't know who the parents are. Um, now, with bedding plants, you, you would see the, the uh, term F1, meaning we know who the male parent is and the female parent, and everything comes out the same way. But in wild collected seed, you never know what you're going to get. Um, when we talk about cuttings, we're talking about asexual propagation. So there is no fertilization. None of that occurs. We are talking, we can take cuttings, we can take divisions, we can take root cuttings. Uh, any part of the plant, in most cases, um, we can... Uh, go ahead and, and get that plant to root and get another uh, uniform or clone from it. So the great thing about asexual propagation is the genetic uniformity. So if I have this plant uh, down here and I take cuttings off of this plant, every cutting that roots, it's going to be a, gen uh, a genetic copy, exact copy of the mother plant or the stock plant is what we call it. So uh, as I mentioned, uniformity is great and this is uh, excellent, especially for woody plants, uh, shrubs, certain trees. Um, we, we clone them. Um, we're able to do that. And as I mentioned, we can do um, stems, we can do leaves, we can do roots. So uh, stem cuttings are what we're going to go over today. Uh, leaves, uh, certain plants like begonias, we can we can use um, leaves. Uh, roots, albizia, um, mimosa tree um, works extremely well with root cuttings. Now, 
the question is, and one of the cool things about propagation is why can plants do this? OK, and there here, here's your uh, 50 cent word for the day. Um, it's called totipotency. And what that means is the cells within the plant are able or capable of differentiating into any cell type of the, for that organism. So when we take this cutting and we give it the right conditions, um, we're going to be able to induce roots to grow. And so that's one of the coolest things and one of the things that's unique about um, working with plants as opposed to uh, with the human body there. They can grow cells into certain organs. They're getting there. But, you know, you can't take cut off the tip of your finger, stick it in some soil and grow out another person. All right, the, the cells just don't do that. Um, but plants have this totipotency. So if, if you watch Jeopardy and you ever see that word, you'll know what it what it means now. So so let's get started. Let's talk about how can we take this cutting and get roots on it. So what 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 is what are we going to need? First thing we're going to need is a good soil mix. All right, a nice light, airy soil mix. Um, we don't want it too heavy. Um, we don't want it too dry, but it depends. Again, it depends on the uh, type of cutting that we are setting. So for these herbaceous cuttings, we are going to go with this nice, light, loose cutting uh, that we can um, uh, use for it. Now, um, we, we, we've got our soil mix. Um, we want to make sure we have um, the right containers. And our containers can go uh, just about uh, any way. Use the toggle. There you go. Use that. Um, so we can go. We can use just about anything with regards to our uh, for our propagation. Some of this stuff you saw when I talked about uh, seeds. So the nice thing about these are you've got different cell sizes, uh, and this will really depend on the type of cutting that you're using. Some have a lot of foliage, uh, like you can see the two uh, perillas down there. Uh, their foliage can get pretty big, so you might want a larger cell. Um, the lantana, the foliage is a little bit smaller, so you might be able to get by with a, a little bit smaller cell. So the type of container that you use um, will sort of dictate one, um, or, or the type of cutting that you use will actually dictate the type of uh, cell or tray that you want to use. So you can see these come in various sizes. They hold various volumes of, of, of soil. Um, these pug, plug pellets or peat pellets are really kind of nice. So these are smaller ones. Um, here's the larger one. And once that is soaked in water, you can see how it grows uh, to that larger cell. So uh, somebody in the office thought I was making brownies. I said, I don't think you want to eat these. Um, they're not going to be very tasty, but they're great for rooting cuttings. So these pellets work extremely well. Um, so you've got your soil, you've got your containers. What's the, the one of the biggest issues when you're doing cutting production is you've got this foliage, okay? Um, and, and so it's gonna, um, it, it naturally wants to photosynthesize and things like that, but, but it really can't because it doesn't have those, uh, the roots yet for, for the nutrients. So um, you want to be able to provide an environment where this plant's going to be able to survive without roots until it starts putting out the roots. And so mist, you know, having your mist bottle after you set your cuttings and then having um, somehow you have to tent it uh, in order to improve uh, your, your propagation success. Remember, uh, you want to optimize the rooting in the shortest period of time. You know, when you take this cutting right away, that 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 cutting, that plant is under stress. It doesn't have any roots anymore. So uh, it can't take up water, it can't take up nutrients, but it's got all this leaf tissue um, that's ready to go. And so we've got to get that balance back. So these uh, tents or, or any kind of plastic uh, that goes over top, these work extremely well for your cuttings because you can tent them, you mist it on, you cover it, and then just let it go. Uh, depending on the type of plant, prop, uh, roots can start anywhere from seven days, could take 14 days. If you start working with woody cuttings uh, from shrubs, um, it could take three to four weeks to several months. So it really just depends. 
but you want to make sure that you're providing the optimum conditions in order to be successful. Now, the one thing I like about this tray is the plastic is it is reusable. OK, where these right, these are the, the cocoa core type containers. Um, when you use these, um, the nice thing about it is a there is no waste. Um, you can pull these cells apart and just go and plant it, plant them either whether they're going into the landscape or into the final pot that you want to grow it in. So these are kind of nice, and I'm sure you can probably buy insert, re, you know, new inserts for these also. If you go with the plastic, you can wash them. Um, the main thing is when you uh, sanitize it, you want to make sure first you get all of the soil out. Uh, you don't want any, you don't want any organic matter left in there. And then once you're done, um, just a, a 10 percent bleach solution. Soak it in that for about 30 minutes and then rinse it out and you are good to go. So um, you, we can recycle, we can reuse things, um, but these trays work extremely well, whether you're doing cuttings or uh, seed. Um, they, they do, um, uh, they're exactly what you need. And, and these kits come in, in various ranges. Now, I'm on the cheap side, you know, hey, everybody buys, you know, takeout or, or we get these spinach or, or whatever. Um, and you can see, let's see these cuttings here. So these are pothos cuttings, but you can take these cells, uh, put them right in there, um, and you've got your own little mini greenhouse. Seal it up, um, humidity will build up inside there. Once you have roots, you take the lid off, the plant will start to um, uh, acclimate uh, because it's a high humidity uh, situation plant them up and you're good to go. So uh, anything like this, you can use um, plastic bags. Um, you, you can make a tent over the top of the pot. Um, but the main thing is you don't you don't want to set them without any type of um, sort of humidity tent, um, because if not, those cuttings are going to dry out on you and you won't be successful. All right, um, so when we talk about success, uh, we have talked about um, you know, taking the cuttings time of year, depending on the plant. Now, the plants down front here, you know, the, these are herbaceous plants. You can pretty much uh, take cuttings on them just about any time, especially down here, uh, since we don't get as cold. Um, and if they're actively growing, you want to have your stock plants, which are these plants, which is the what we're referring to when we um, take our cuttings. We want our stock plants to be healthy. We want to have good, vigorous growth on it. We don't want to have any pests. We don't want to have any diseases. Uh, we want to make sure that we are, um, you know, when you start clean uh, and you start with healthy plants or healthy cuttings, you're going to do much better. So that's one of the um, um, definite pluses. The one thing you don't want, and as you can see here, let me grab it on our lantana, is you don't want to take cuttings that are setting flowers or in flower um, because the hormones uh, that that plant is putting at least in these stems that's putting energy in there so um, if this was going to be my stock plant um, and i i needed cuttings i would be pinching uh, the flowers off of this so it would stay vegetative like this because we want vegetative cuttings um, to use the use the joystick um, we want we want to use uh, the vegetative cuttings. OK, we want to use the vegetative cuttings uh, in order to um, uh, be successful uh, with our plants. The other thing is um, have a good set of shears um, uh, or a knife. Um, so, you know, uh, I've got my Felco number twos. I use these for just about everything. Um, with with the softer tissue, um, scissors even work great um, because they get in there. Um, you get a nice clean cut. You get a nice, you know, what we want to make sure is we get a clean cut. You can see um, the foliage looks good on that. Even if the foliage is too big, say for the cell that we're cutting or that we're going to stick the cutting in, we can cut some of these older leaves in half. Because it doesn't need it right now. As long as that growing tip down in there 
is is doing well. Um, we want to we can we can minimize or reduce the amount of tissue on this cutting in order to minimize uh, the stress. So you can see in there how we cut that back. Um, we can see the growing tip is still there, which is exactly what we want. And this plant, you know, th this cutting will do extremely well. So making sure we're we're growing our stock plants or, or our mother plants um, and, and starting with healthy cuttings uh, and excellent um, quality uh, plants um, is going to be a key. We've got a question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. So the question is, can we use ProMix for rooting cuttings? Absolutely. Uh, as long as you want to make sure you've got clean. Uh, you know, it doesn't have, you know, it hasn't been around for too long. It isn't, uh, it doesn't have sort of that smell that maybe it's decaying, that it's been too wet for too long. But yes, ProMix will work well. It has, a, you know, a, gr a good mix will have a mix of peat moss, um, perlite, and vermiculite. Okay. Can you hear me? I just want to make sure. Okay, great. So you, you want to have that mix and, and, and ProMix uh, does it. it. It's got peat moss, perlite, vermiculite. So it's got a, a, a good mix of for water holding capacity and also for uh, airspace. Any other questions? OK, we're good. So let's continue on. So we're talking about we talked about our stock plants um, taking the right time of year, um, removing flower buds because we want it vegetative and, and um, uh, definitely improving what we. Uh, we want that soil to be wet or moist um, before we set the cuttings. Um, we, we need the humidity in order for that plant to continue on. Light is really not a key at this point. Um, we don't want to have extra stress. So the cuttings that I set down here, um, they were on my patio. They do not get any direct sun. Um, they had the plastic tent over them, um, and so they did extremely fine. So we want to minimize the amount of sun they are getting until they get the roots on them. Once they get the roots on them, then we need to get the sun on them uh, levels in order for them to. OK, so now let's go ahead and let me move these back down here. And let's uh, talk about how do we take cuttings? Um, so you can see on this, so this is some pothos. All right, so this is a, a, a indoor plant my wife has uh, at work. Some plants, you don't even need all this fancy stuff. You have a jar of water and you're fine. So you can see the root systems on this. So you can see we've got a root. It might show up better against the black here. So we've got two roots. We've got one there. We've got one there. Um, we can take this. We can plant it up. Uh, and this plant will start to go off. This is one of the easier ones because you can see the initials on these aerial roots are there. So this is probably one of, if you've got children, um, this is probably one of the easiest ones um, that you can do with them um, because you just take it, stick it in a glass of water, uh, and within two to three, two to three weeks, you'll start to see uh, root emergence. So that's, that's quite easy uh, and, and um, fun to do. So let's take a look first at what I did, uh, and then I'll take you through how to, to uh, you know, set some cuttings. Um, so these cuttings were set uh, March 16th, so almost a month. Next week will be a month. And what I did was half of them, of each variety, they have rooting hormone. So in order to in increase your odds, um, for success, um, rooting hormone is often used. So rooting hormone is a hormone, it's an auxin. And these auxins uh, help to produce or promote rooting. Uh, they are available either as a powder or a liquid. Do all plants need them? No. Um, but in certain cases, it helps. Uh, it can help with, uh, as you can see, you can see the powder in there. It's usually a talc. Um, and the hormone is attached to it. Uh, this is point, uh, what is it? 
0.1% uh, of the rooting hormone um, IBA. Um, it can it can either um, hasten rooting, so we can get rooting to occur faster, or we can see the number of roots uh, increase versus those that aren't treated. So you get to do, you know, I, I often talk about in propagation, whether it's seed or cuttings, there's an art and a science. And so some of the art is understanding what's, you know, what works and what doesn't work. So this is just how you could do a, a quick little experiment uh, to see, does it really need it? So here's our, um, this is perilla, and this is with rooting hormone. So I'm gonna pop one, this one out. And let's see, hopefully, can we see any difference? And I'll clean it up. So this is with rooting hormone, and look at the number of roots that we have growing alongside there. So this is, um, you know, this is looking pretty good. Now let's look at no rooting hormone. And I'm gonna cut on to this other one, because it's about the same size. And, it's still not too bad, but I, I do see a difference. I, I, I think I'm seeing more roots there. Um, the roots are a little bit thinner here. Um, maybe not as much. It's still holding the plug together. So in this case, either one, um, it, you know, I think the, the hormone did help. Now let's look at the lantana because now I'm curious to see what's going to happen. This is a uh, perilla, P-E-R-I-L-L-A. It's in the coleus family. Okay, so now let's look at lantana. So here is with the rooting hormone. And let's see if we can get these out. Here we go. Okay, so now we can see a little bit difference in the rooting here. So that this is with hormone. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at um, one without hormone. Let's see what, what we got going on here. Okay, so you can see the um, lantana is rooting a, a little bit slower than the perilla. Um, this is non-hormone here, right? Let me see, no hormone. Got some bigger, thicker roots. Here's with the hormone. So, you know, I'm not seeing a lot of difference. This would probably, these guys, the perilla is probably ready to go and be shifted up into a larger container. These, I would probably leave another week or so, just so what I like to see is that this plug comes out cleanly with just the roots and the soil and it doesn't fall apart, where here it's falling apart. So that's always a good way of figuring out whether you need to um, leave it uh, a little bit longer or if it's ready to be transplanted. So that gives you an idea of what these look like. This is three weeks after the fact. Um, and as I said, you can see the tray here. So I fill the soil with tray. I feel the soil with tray. I feel the tray with soil. Um, I water it in, I let it settle down. And as you can see on this side, you can see how these uh, cells look. Um, and so what we're, we'll do now is let's go ahead and take some cuttings just so you have an idea of how to do it. And I'll do the, I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and set uh, three with the hormone and then three without, just so you can see. So what you do is you never wanna dip right into the, the stock. So I usually just, just tap a little bit out. We're not gonna be setting many cuttings, so. Um, the other thing what you wanna do is when you take your cuttings, I, I like to take them and set them as soon as possible. If for some reason um, you've got some uh, problems where you want to take the cuttings and you can't get to them right away, then wrap them in a moist paper towel, put them in a Ziploc bag. You can even put them in um, uh, the refrigerator to just chill them down and, and, and uh, hold them until you can do it. But I usually don't like to cut more than I can set, uh, and I, I'd like to, to set them as soon as I got it. We've got a question. Okay, great question. So uh, we've got these cuttings in prop uh, that are propagated in, wa in water. And the question is, how do we transition them into the soil? Very easy, great question, but it's very easy. So all I would do is find a pot 
um, that is ready. I would move. I would remove this. Uh, I will even show you now. I would remove this leaf because we've got the roots there. Get rid of that leaf. And now we've got our plant. And so I would take this, put it in a pot. Uh, if this was my pot, I would plant it to about that height where the roots are uh, below the soil. Um, we've got two leaves um, for uh, to help with uh, photosynthesis. And then there will be buds that will break along here um, where new growth will occur. So it, it, it's really easy. You don't have to worry about high humidity. Um, really, you just want to make sure you're co covering your the roots, um, putting it in a spot where it will be happy, and you just go. Is there a DIY recipe for rooting hormone? I'm sure there is, but I usually don't mix. Now, I know large nurseries, um, certain cuttings may have nuances where there may be mixes. So the auxins, there are three types. There's IBA, which is indobuteric acid. There's NAA, which is naphthalene acetic acid. And there's uh, IAA, which, indol, which is indole acetic acid. And all of them work a little bit they do the same thing, but they work differently. Some of them need to be at higher concentrations, other at lower. There are some out there that are combinations of IB, uh, IBA and NAA. Um, and so um, mixing your own, you would have to, and, and we used to do this uh, when I ran the tissue culture lab, you know, we would buy stock or, or straight NAA or IAA. Uh, and when we had tissue cultures, we, it, that would be incorporated into the media in order to take uh, something that was a plantlet that was ready to go, but we needed to put roots on it. So um, can you mix your own? Probably. I've never done it. it, it it's much easier. It's much safer. Um, and like I said, you can either get it as a powder or you can get it as a liquid. They're, they're both available out there. Okay. I have no clue. Um, I've never, okay, I'm sorry. The question is, some people recommend using honey and turmeric. Uh, I would have no clue about that. Um, I've never come across that as a suggestion. Um, could you use it? Yes, you know, it's one of those things. From extension, honey and turmeric aren't listed as rooting compounds, so we can't um, make that suggestion. Now, if you've got some experience with it, and if it works, hey, great. Um, but I, A, I've never used it, uh, so I would have no, you know, I have no experience, so I, I wouldn't be able to speak to that. All right. Okay, so great. Great questions. Keep them coming. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take a few cuttings here. Uh, and so you can see I'm going to take uh, three cuttings. Uh, and you can see these got, these have nice growing points to them. Um, the stems are very healthy. Everything is looking great, so we should be set for success. So I've got three. So these are going to be three that I'm going to set um, with the hormone. Now, as, as I mentioned, this cutting, this foliage is really big. All right, so I am going to cut that back because the, the, the plant's not going to need it. We, we want to minimize the amount of stress. And you can see nice, clean cuts. If you leave that foliage in there, it gets wet. It's, there's always a chance that you're going to end up with uh, some disease issues. So let's get, let's get it cl cleaned up, get it away. We just want to make sure we've got that growing point, that apical meristem there that's ready to go. And so we've got this cleaned up. Uh, where's my trusty pencil? Pencil works great for, for um, setting cutting. So as you can see, all I'm going to do is, is dibble and hopefully Shannon can get in there with it. Uh, I'm just going to make some little holes here. And then what I'm going to do is this is going to be with the hormone. So all I'm going to do is just dip the end in after that cutting is made. And then I'm going to give a little tap and you can see how it's covered on the end of that. I'm just going to take that and just stick it in. Give a little pinch. Oop. Give a little pinch of that soil just to keep it upright. OK, here goes number three. So as you can see, just a little bit, you know, tap it off. Get any extra, you can see it, that that cut end is covered. 
So I'm going to stick it in here. And just not real deep, but just so it can stand up. Uh, let's do number three here. Same thing. Dip. Little tap. The thing I like about the, 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 the powder is um, you just have to cover the edge. It's easier to see the liquid uh, and there will be directions on it. It will say um, a 10 second dip or a five second dip. And so um, you've got to make sure, you know, you're, you're paying attention to what you're using uh, in order to make sure you get the right count, uh, uh, the right deal. Um, so that's my hormone one. So I'm going to put this back in. I'm going to close this up and this is going to last you a while unless you're into propagation, um, but that is going to uh, last you quite a while. I'm going to take three cuttings off of this perilla, uh, but I'm not going to use hormone. OK, so as you can see this, you know, this plant, I took the cuttings. You could uh, the, this is all new growth since I took those initial cuttings for the, the plants on this end. So we're going to turn around and take these cuttings and I'm going to you know I'm going to take a, a, a lower node here just to show you it doesn't always have to be the terminals okay so let me put this back here and Shannon if you can come in on this one so this stem this is the same stem so this was sitting here I took this cutting but I can also root this because a I've got my leaves here but you can see the buds that are breaking so I again, uh, this works fine. So, you know, all along that stem on that perilla, you can pretty much get a lot of cutting. So you can have a lot of perilla to give out for the holidays or uh, to your friends or family, or if you just love the plant, I'm gonna minimize, you know, clean up the, the, the foliage here. Uh, let's clean this up again, just like we did the other one. This one, the older foliage, I'm gonna clean it up, cut it back in half. I'm going to leave this. So here you can see. So here's our two terminal cuttings. And then here is the next node down and you can see the um, the buds there and we're going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to um, make dibble my holes here. And then we're just going to stick these in. A little pinch around them just to 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 make sure that soil we don't we want to make sure we don't want to clamp down on it we just want to make sure the soil is in touch with that stem um, if there's air pockets you know if, if we make that hole too big and we don't pinch back around it um, there's a good chance it's going to dry out and, and you're not going to be successful with it so as you can see it, it's just a little bit of a pinch so it holds up so the next step would be what we're going to give it a little bit of mist I'll try not to get Shannon wet. So I and I, I just like to soak it down. So you can see the amount of moisture that's on that. And then the next step is this. So if we were doing this and I was starting these, I'm going to take this. Of course, I would have my label like I have them over here. I would put the date and in this case I would put RH for rooting hormone or however you want to label it and this one I would put no RH no rooting hormone and so this way I would know if I was doing my trial or, or getting an idea of what works what doesn't work um, I would do that and then you just take your lid cover it up you try what not to pinch the foliage uh, I even take a few small binder clips and just clip it depending on where it's located. You know, I had these on the patio just in case it was windy, but that's it. Um, you're, you're off. You're off to the races with that. Um, questions. So, which one or the powder hormone better in your experience? Uh, so the question is, does the liquid or the powder hormone work better? A again, it depends on the species that you are rooting. Um, when I was uh, working in the industry, um, I would say 90% of the time um, we were using liquid. Uh, they would take large bundles, stick them, pull them out, and then start setting. So it, it really just depends on the plant, uh, the species uh, that you're working with. 
Um, but some people, and some people, it's one of those over time, um, some people will prefer the liquid versus the powder, other ones don't. I, I, I sort of came from the school of using the powder, but I've used both and I've been successful with both. Okay. Okay, so the question is about rooting roses. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to say is hopefully the roses that you want to propagate are not patented. Okay, because we should not be propagating patented roses. And how do you know if a rose is patented or not? I'm going to use, uh, I could use this one here. Um, if you see a label and you see the letters PP, a F or P P and then you see two three comma three seven zero. All right. These are patented plants. And what that means is they are protected from propagation from unauthorized or unlicensed propagation. So P P A F means plant patent is applied for. So the plant the, the process has started, the application's been put in, and so they can go ahead and start to sell that and show that that is going to be a protected plant. If you see this plant patent and then the number, you can go to the website for the US, plant, uh, the US Patent Office, put that number in and it will show you the patent that was sent in and approved for that plant. So if you are, if you have plants like this, you should not be propagating them because there's a lot of time, effort, research, resources, money, everything that goes into it. And this this means it is protected for 20 years. So the owner of the patent has protection on that for 20 years. OK, so I know I, I, I went off, but I'm just making sure. So we're, we're back. We're still talking about the roses. So if we're talking about roses, um, the, the answer would be um, roses can be taken from herbaceous cuttings or, or softwood cuttings. We're, we're going to talk about some of the different types of cuttings. So these are herbaceous cuttings. They're soft. They're very easy to use. Roses can usually be taken from either soft wood cuttings or semi hardwood cuttings. So if they are softwood, they're very pliable. They're very easy to move. Um, if they are semi hardwood, they started to a uh, little bit on the, the hardwood side, but overall um, they, they, they root extremely well. So the cutting for roses is probably going to be about three to five. Softwood. And one of the uh, resources, one of the links is from University of Florida, and it goes, it, it's a great reference because it talks about what type of cutting you can use. It mentioned, I believe, concentrations and things like that. Um, so roses, yes, you can do them. Um, I, 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 I know we've done softwood cuttings. They've rooted extremely well, and we've had no issues with it. So question. one more question. Containers have drain holes. Yes, they do. Now the tray does not. So just be aware that's a great question. So the question is, do they have, do these containers have drain holes? So the peat type ones, it's really not as big an issue because it's it's um, sort of an organic, the, the water will, will make its way out. These plastic ones though, um, you can see in there that um, we've got, um, We've got holes in them. So yes, holes are necessary, but the tray itself on this one um, does not have holes in it. So just be aware that, you know, when it when you do water, if you water um, as they get larger, um, you will be collecting water in that tray. So you're going to have to drain it off because you don't want it sitting there, especially when you have those young roots. Um, Another question? Great, let's have it. OK, so I had what I would recommend is for Mandevillas is maybe taking that new growth as it starts to emerge. Try that youngest growth. 
Um, we used to set cuttings on that. The other thing I, I would look up to see whether a hardwood or a semi-hardwood cutting might work better. Try the various lengths of it. Uh, happens and, and how it works. But mandevilla should work. You know, you should be able to to get some success with it. Um, just try a few different things. A couple things I, I want to cut uh, touch on here um, briefly is one of the things I, I didn't talk about and I want to is, you know, when we are talking about that environment, OK, um, so we've got, you know, no roots. We, we want to build up the humidity. But and the other thing that will help is bottom heat. So this is a mat where we can provide bottom heat. So this one works would work extremely well for this because I could set this mat, this tray right on top of it. Normally, we want a soil temperature of about 70, 72 degrees, which is ideal. So you'll have a nice warm soil. Um, you'll have humidity inside here uh, and these mats work extremely well. Large greenhouses, they'll have autumn heat throughout the entire benches, throughout the uh, throughout the entire house. Thing that's nice about it, we don't have to worry about the ambient air temperature when we're rooting. We're really interested in that soil. And so if you even set these in a cooler spot, but you've got bottom heat mat there, you're going to have more success. All right. So this is great. This was only, I think, 40 bucks. Um, what I would recommend is they do sell a thermostat. You could plug this into the thermostat and you could dial in the temperature that you want. And this way you're going to have a much more consistent environment to get your rooting. So bottom heat, rooting hormone and moisture mist are three of the, the main keys. Um, to close out, I've got a couple more things real fast I want to show you is so this is these are herbaceous cuttings. Uh, and then I talked about hardwood softwood, semi hardwood and hardwood cuttings. So, you know, a softwood cutting, think of it this way, is uh, for our area, cuttings are usually collected March through June. So something like an azalea, we, we would root from a softwood cutting after it's done blooming. So they're blooming now, a couple weeks after they're done, maybe a month after, any time from, from March through June, we're gonna take our cuttings for our azaleas and set them. And then we talk about semi-hardwood cutting. So we've got current year's growth, but it's, it, it's, it's starting to harden up just a little bit. It may not be as flexible as the, um, as the softwood cutting. Um, and, but the nice thing about it, it's not as vulnerable uh, to maybe to harsher conditions, so to drying out and things because it's a little bit more established. So semi-hardwood cuttings would be something like um, oleanders, nerium, uh, junipers, or even camellias. Camellias, um, when I was in the industry, the propagator always said we would take the camellias after the stem would sort of have a coppery tone to it. Uh, it wasn't green, it wasn't brown, it was in that coppery color. And that's when he knew he had the best root. Again, there's always things that you're going to learn with it's softwood. And then the last one we talk about are hardwood cuttings. So these are dormant cuttings. For down here, we're collecting through fed of hardwood season, uh, and we're going back to the softwood season. Um, and the length of these can vary. We can have four inch cuttings, we can have 30 inch cuttings. Um, I worked for a paper company. We used to take sycamore cuttings uh, and they were, you know, uh, 30 inches long uh, and, and they were, we, we would cut them down. So they worked extremely well. Um, okay, um, sure. So uh, with the dormant cuttings, uh, we would take them, you know, December through February. Some of the uh, ideal or species that you would work with are the figs or grapes, hydrangeas you can take from hardwood cuttings. And, and so, you know, year round you can propagate. It, it just depends on what plant you're working with um, and, and what's your favorite, um, you know, plant that you, you, you want to multiply. Just remember, when, once you get it down, you can end up with a lot of plants. Um, so just be aware of that. One more thing, and then we'll, we'll hit a few questions. When we talk about hardwood cuttings, you OK? So there's different types of hardwood cuttings. These are ones I, I, just, I just cut. These are what we call straight cuttings, OK? So um, they're just a normal cut on the bottom. When you take hardwood cuttings, you don't have any foliage on them. 
So you have to make sure you keep the orientation the right way. Um, so what some growers will do, will they'll, they'll dip the tips um, of the um, non-sticking end in wax or they'll mark them somehow so they know not to stick them upside down. Because you'll know real soon if you've got them, if you're sticking the wrong way, um, this is either isn't going to grow or the buds are going to break and you're not going to have any roots. So that's one way uh, of doing that. Straight cutting. Another one is a heel cutting. So what you want to do is expose that. And the main thing about these is exposing a little bit more of the wood when you dip in the hormone. Hardwood cuttings are going to have to use um, a rooting hormone. And so um, you can see the heel cutting. We've got a little bit extra tissue on there. We would dip that in the hormone. Uh, we would stick, uh, sit it in the propagation bed. Hardwood cuttings, sometimes beds are just strictly perlite um, with bottom heat. So because they're going to be in there for quite a while. So we've got our straight cuttings. We've got our heel cuttings. And then in other cases, they have what they call cuttings. And it looks just as it says, a mallet. And so you can see, again, there's a little bit more at the base, um, no foliage on it, uh, but this just gives you an idea. So if you're looking into certain things and they talk about a mallet hardwood cutting or a heel um, or, or just a straight cutting, um, this gives you a good idea as to, to what it looks like and, 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 and how it should be. And one of the things they'll mention is wounding. You know, sometimes you don't want to just stick a cutting like that. It needs a wound. And so wounding can be something as easy as just nicking the side of it. Now you can see this is green wood. It's not real, but they'll, they'll just nick the e either side and it, and it, it just exposes more tissue. Other, other growers will, certain plants, they'll just come and if we can get this, They'll just scrape down the side on either side. Again, the, 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 the issue or the, the ultimate goal is to expose some more tissue when you dip that hormone. Uh, and so wounding the hormone, the bottom heat, the moisture, all pluses, hardwood cuttings, there's different types of cuttings. And I think I've covered it. Do we have any more questions, um, Lily? Boxwoods, again, I would be a hardwood cutting. So um, probably the best time to root would be, take your cuttings would be December through February. Um, there is, again, I showed this book when I talked about uh, seed propagation, but this Hartman and Kepler book, um, there's a ton of information in there. Uh, and so if you really wanna get into propagation, whether it's seed or cuttings, by all, this is an older version. Uh, there is a newer version out, um, but this would go into exactly, you know, what the cutting should be, look, should look like, um, you know, what type of hormone should be used, things like that. Um, there is another book by Dr. Durr, um, Dr. Michael Durr, uh, on woody landscape plants, and he talks about the plant itself, but then he also always gives propagation information on how to propagate it. So there are a ton of references out there. If you ever have any questions about what reference book, you know, send me an email. We, we can always help you out with that. Another question, okay? Okay, they say, I know this is about cuttings, but I have a question about layering. When is the best time of year to air layer woody plants like oleander? Is it useful at all to use hormone when layering? Okay, so the question is about air layering, and I guess the specifically the, the question is about oleander for air layering. Um, I've never air layered uh, uh, oleander. We've always taken uh, semi hardwood cuttings uh, for oleander. So taking cuttings from May through October, um, it's it's still the, the first that year's growth, but it has hardened off a little bit. Um, when you do air layer, it is always good to put some rooting hormone in there. So depending on whether you're putting a slit or you're removing bark, so. Uh, air layer is you take a, a section um, you can either cut a strip out into there or you can remove the bark around it um, you would put some um, hormone around that you'd get some wet sphagnum moss pack it around it have plastic seal it off 
and then when this roots, you cut it down below. Here's your new plant, and then you'll have buds break from there. So, um, it, yeah, you would have to look, and I don't know, you know, I know we have, uh, there's the Oleander Society and things like that. They may have a little bit more specific information for you with regard to uh, air layering, air layering uh, neariums. Okay, any other questions? Okay, well, um, I hope that this helped you all out. I know I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, we do appreciate your support. Um, by all means, continue to follow us on Facebook. Um, continue to uh, you know join us for these. We're, we're we've got recordings on. Um, uh, We've got the podcast, we're on YouTube. Uh, and the other thing is, if you want to come and see all three of us tomorrow, for I'm sorry, I keep on thinking today is Friday, on Saturday um, at Trini Mendenhall, for the low, low price of $20, you can get more horticulture information from myself, from Shannon Deeds, from Brandy uh, Keller. Um, we've got a great program plan. There's going to be giveaways. They're going to be some snacks. What more could you do, ask for, for for a Saturday? So with that, I'm going to kick it back over to Brandy. I want to thank you all for your support uh, and tune in next month for uh, our next homegrown lecture. Hi, uh, hold on just one minute. I'm going to bring up uh, our homegrown roadshow flyer and get that up here for you. Let's see, here we go. Thank you, Paul, that was really great. You guys had some really good questions. Uh, so this is our flyer for Saturday. Uh, obviously it would be uh, limited seating, um, but there's still definitely still space. It's nine to 12. And so I will talk about some herb combinations in containers, um, which that's been fun to research and, and look up. Uh, we'll talk about some themes, Mexican food, uh, Mediterranean food, and then some herbs, you know, like to be dry, some moist, so what to plant together. Uh, Paul will talk about the Harris County plant trials. He's been doing um, some of the plant trials down at the Master Gardener uh, Demonstration Gardens for a couple years now. Just simply gorgeous. Um, so he'll be able to share with you what are the top performers. Um, they certainly don't baby the plants out there. Uh, what they're looking for are plants that you know can really survive. You know, survive our <laughs> our climate, our weather. Um, without having to be um, super baby. So he's going to give some really great information there. And then getting back to the foundation, Gardening 101, uh, Shannon will talk about um, fertilizers, soil location, um, and, and some information for um, beginners and experienced people. So we thank you for attending today. Uh, if you're interested in this road show, I think you can still sign up today. Uh, you will get a survey. We really gratefully thank you for filling out the survey and thank you, Paul, it was great. Everyone have a great rest of your weekend.